If you're trying to learn Arduino programming, you've probably come across some stuff in the code that has you scratching your head and you're like, what does that mean? What is this? Well, it, you know, if you're learning like a spoken language, say English, I mean, I'm a native English speaker. I still turn to dictionaries, right? Like if I have a question about a word, I'll pull out my little pocket dictionary that I just, you know, keep in my pocket all the time. I'll open it up and I'll go to a word specifically and I'll look at the entry for the word to try to figure out like, hey, how is it used? How do you pronounce it? Like, I don't know, maybe they talk about uh, where the word came from, whatever. It's a handy tool when you're trying to learn something about a language. Well, with Arduino, there is a tool like a dictionary. It's called the Arduino Reference. And today we're gonna talk about the Arduino Reference, where to find it, how to use it, and why you should absolutely be using it. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, so I'm talking about this Arduino reference. Basically, it's just a series of web pages on the Arduino website, but how do you actually get to it? So let's go ahead and navigate this. So there's a couple ways to get to it. You go to the Arduino website, here we are right now, you go up to documentation. Okay, so I click documentation, and what we're interested in over here on the left-hand side, it says programming, or you know, you could click there, but anywhere, here's programming. And what we're interested in is the language reference. This is the page that I like. You know, you could click here or we'll just click view all. Okay, so right here, this is what I'm referring to when I say the language reference. Now, another way you can get to this Arduino reference is actually from the Arduino IDE. Basically, the Arduino IDE has a bunch of HTML pages saved and so when you go to the reference, it'll open it up. So even if you're offline, you can get to this reference document. So I'll just, and I, just to prove it, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna kill my Wi-Fi here. No Wi-Fi, all right? And so what you do in the Arduino IDE is you go to help, reference, and this is gonna open up a browser. And just so you know, you know, I'm not like, I'm actually not online here. All right, so this is what the reference used to look like. It's literally the exact same thing, okay? So all of the same stuff, all of the same links, all of the same information, pretty much the same layout when you get to the specific pages, specific pages, but it's, uh, you know, organized on a different site. Okay, and then of course, the other old way you could get to it is you just type Arduino reference up in the URL and it'll, it'll basically, here, let me connect back to internet here. So if you just search, you know, if you just search for the Arduino reference, it'll take you here. Anyway, but let's go to the uh, new and improved Arduino reference page and let's acclimate ourselves to this page. Let's look around. So there's three basic categories. There's functions, all right? And then here are all the different functions that you've got in Arduino. And then you've got variables and these are the different reference pages for the variables. And then you have structure. And these are the different reference uh, pages for the different structures that are set up in the Arduino language. Okay, so let's check out a specific entry inside the functions here. So I'm just gonna go to digital read, okay? Now, notice that the page is laid out with these he headers, right? So it's got like digital read at the top. So we're looking at the reference page for digital read. And then it's got description, syntax, parameters, returns, example code, notes, warnings, and then see also. So what you'll find is that this, this header organization is gonna be the same for every one of these reference pages, or nearly the same. That's nice because when you look at a function or variable or structure or whatever, you kind of like get a sense for how to like look at the pages, right? Okay, so let's talk about each of these headers. So this is basically pretty straightforward. The description is just gonna be some words talking about the function. So this is saying, hey, reads the value from a specified digital pin, either high or low. So, okay, that's what digital read does, that makes sense. The syntax is how you actually type it out in the Arduino IDE. Like, how do you, you know, like, what's it look like when you type it in an IDE? So here you write digital read, and then it's got opening and closing parentheses, and then on the inside, it's got a word and it's pin, right? Now, here's the deal. When you type this in the Arduino IDE, you don't actually type pin, this is referring to the type of argument that goes in to the digital read function, okay? So, you know, this could be the number 13 that you type in there, or it could be a variable that holds some number, you know, some pin number, essentially. So that's what syntax is. Now, if you want, if you ever get to these functions and you wonder, well, like, what do they mean by pin? Look no further than the next heading. It says parameters, okay? So, again, the parameters are what, you know, go inside that you kind of pass to the function, okay, so that it can do its work. 
All right, so here it tells us exactly what the pin is. It says the Arduino pin number you want to read. So, hey, it kind of spells it out for you. That's handy. And then it tells you what the function returns. It says it returns either high or low. Okay, then it gives you some example code. And this is pretty cool. It tells you what the example code does. And then it just, you know, it just shows you how it's laid out or whatever. And what's cool is you can just copy that, throw it right in the Arduino IDE and kind of play around. So this is like, you know, in a dictionary where they give you a sentence and they use the word in the sentence. This is like that. They're, you know, using the digital read function here. So here they've got digital read. They passed in a variable called in pin and in pin was seven right here. Right. And then they're Digital read was going to return a value. Well, it looks like they're saving that uh, value in val. Okay, so hey, that's, you know, that's useful. All right, and then it comes down to this section where there's notes and warnings. Now, I think notes and warnings is actually my favorite section because you learn some interesting things about, like, the functions and the code in the Arduino language uh, that you might not otherwise know. And also, I, the warnings are pretty important because... I mean, the warnings, they're like, you don't want to use, you don't want to use some function if it's warning you not to, for some reason. Like if you were flying a helicopter and some warning light comes up, like you are probably gonna be pretty concerned about that. Same, you know, if you're writing code, you want to be aware of the warnings associated with different functions or whatever that you're using. Okay. So let's just take a look at this one. This one says, if the pin isn't connected to anything, digital read can return either high or low. And this can change randomly, like, hey, that's a good thing to know. So you want to make sure you've connected the pin to something. And then this is interesting. It says the analog input pins can be used as digital pins, referred to as A0, A1, et cetera. And then they've got some exceptions. So, well, that's cool because, you know, when you look at an Arduino board, usually they break them up into digital pins and analog pins. But this is saying, hey, you can actually use digital read on all the analog pins, just like any other general purpose input output pin. That's kind of cool to know, right? It's like you might not have known that otherwise if you hadn't taken a look at that Arduino reference. All right, so now let's look at, I don't know, let's look at the variables section. So here's the variables. You can see they got a bunch of different stuff in here. I'll just go ahead and know, let's check out the double. All right, so here's a double. Again, it's got a description. And you know, this is interesting. It says that the double implementation is exactly the same as the float with no gain in precision. Well, hey, that's kind of good to know. Uh, on the Arduino Duo, doubles have 8-byte, 64-bit precision. Okay, so it's basically saying like, hey, this is pretty much a float for most at Megabase boards. Okay, so, you know, hey, that's kind of interesting to use. It's got the syntax, parameters. So then, you know, it never hurts to look at the notes and warnings. And it says what? Users who borrow code from other sources that include double variables may wish to examine the code to see if the implied precision is different from that actually achieved on at Mega-based Arduino boards. So there's, a, you know, just like another interesting thing to know about doubles. Now, I'm not trying to tell you like, hey, you should go to the Arduino reference and read the whole thing. That'd be like, you know, the kid in fifth grade who sat around reading the dictionary. But what I'm saying is when you come to, if you're just learning the language or you're coming across a function or you're wondering if maybe there's a function or some, you know, language tool and you want to explore that functional language tool, the Arduino reference is the source of truth for all this information. So it's a really good place to get familiar with and use. I use the Arduino reference constantly when I'm developing with Arduino. All right. Well, I hope you see the value in the Arduino reference. Pretty much every programming language is going to have a reference resource somewhere. Uh, I, I feel like the one for Arduino is pretty good. I've been using it for a long time. I find it pretty well organized. I've been able to discover like new functions in there like, oh, hey, I didn't know it could do that or this or whatever. So I don't know. I think it's a really handy tool. In fact, I think as an Arduino developer, you should probably go to this website so often that just when you start to type in like Arduino into your URL, it should just pop up like Arduino reference. Now the Arduino reference is super helpful, but what's also super helpful is getting your hands dirty, writing some code and just getting a big overview of the language. If you'd like to do that, check out this Arduino and 90 minutes video. It's gonna walk you through everything you need to know to jumpstart your Arduino development.